I'm sorry. I'll just be a minute. You had a minute. Next one comes out of your pay. He's off the threats, friend. I'm going. Boss's orders. We all got quotas to make. When I was little, we'd get freighters in every Sunday noon. Now they only come but once a month. I love the wind here. Yeah, huh? That's on account of how I never met her. I don't rightly know. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when I was born, I got sent here. Well, I don't know about normal. Dad said she worked under some kind of special contract. It's sensible. Dad just fixed machines. She did some kind of crazy math, high-level stuff. Better to raise me on his time than hers. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. The war! The coming apocalypse! Man versus machine! I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. Just my luck. I ask for backup and the boss sends me one of them simple folk. All right. Listen real close. Auto mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant, clattering about, firing at the birds, orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? Go on. I'm Ludwig Miller, Associate Security Officer for Transportation. Officially? Unofficially? Strictly between you and me. I am the only thing standing between Edgewater and total annihilation. I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans, mostly. Some spaces chaw. Few bit cards. I'll reward you for your aid. Enlistment fees. Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the resistance a bad name. They have sent a scout prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Mechanicals got a weak spot in their midsections. I think the technical term is, um, the blue glowy square thing.
Aw, oh, he ain't no threat. But I- Here we go! Bouncing off! Bring us honor, soldier. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs? Pulled its optic cables out its headcase? Actually, don't tell me. Rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one, and the enemy is legion. What you need is an equalizer. A weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical hearts. Cantina, lavatory, behind one of the toilets. That's where I've kept it hidden all these years. Sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place a mechanical has need to enter. On the double soldier. Don't want the bartender poking around in there with a mop. Go on. You ever seen the way a mechanical just stands there? Just looking at you, scanning you with its murderous oculus. Mechanicals have been programmed to eliminate the human race. They've been programmed to replace us. First, they will rob us of our jobs. And once they have taken away our livelihoods, they will take away our very lives.
You're not a big drinker, are you? Only the part that said we ain't making our quotas. If only McDevitt's folk hadn't abandoned us, Cannery could use those extra hands. Nothing hmm? we can do about that. Sure there is. We can have another zero G. Never seen you here before. You a visitor? Welcome. On behalf of the Spacer's Choice family, let me welcome you to... to, uh... <laughs> Where am I again? Edgewater. Jewel of the Vale. May the law bless our beloved cannery with a hundred years of, uh... What's it called? Productivity. That's the one. Yep, that's us. Productive. Oh, it's fine. I I'm only on my third bottle. I don't start heaving up my guts as long as I can count to three. Company lets me imbibe as much zero-G brew as I can afford. Even gave me a discount on account of my injury. You jealous yet? Yep. Got my mitt stuck in a rotor wheel. Shredded my wrist up real good. Conrad went and sewed up my hand, but I couldn't do much about the pain. Boss was real generous to me, though. Got myself a 5% discount on Zero G Brew. After the second bottle, the only pain I feel is emotional. Oh, you can say that again. The Spacer's Choice family is the only family I'll ever need. I don't know you. Amelia Kim, Spacer's Choice Beverage Dispenser. I don't know what you're about, but this here is a Spacer's Choice drinking establishment. We're all loyal, hardworking company folk here. <laughs> Am I that easy to read? Yeah, we've been having some problems lately. Loyalty issues, lines in the sand. I know where folk in Edgewater stand. But you, I don't know you. If you're gonna have a drink, I'd like to ask that you do it within the premises. <sighs> Can't have you taking drinks over to those deserters. Coming right up. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm contractually obligated to recite company slogans to any visitors. We'll get you mostly drunk at half the price. Spacer's choice. Go ahead. I don't see how that's any of your business. You're the first to ask after me in some time. I'll give you that. But I don't have a story to share. My family's work Spacer's Choice for two generations, and I've lived in Edgewater just about all my life. Wanted to work in the sciences once upon a time. Would you believe it? That was a wild fancy. Glad I disabused myself. What happened, you ask? What always happens when you're dreaming? I woke up. I just didn't have the brains for it. Asked too many questions. Wasn't suited to the work. So I did the right thing and worked the life I was always meant to live. Now that I'm behind a bar, I can ask all the questions I want. Important ones. Like when are you gonna pay your tab? And would you like another round of cold, refreshing zero G? Don't 
Don't talk to me that way, please. Spent many years disabusing myself of that notion. Don't need you putting it back in my head. Hmm. Lab work ain't for me. Never was. Never will be. Spacer's Choice put me where I belong, and for that I am grateful. They did. They gave me a life. Gave me a purpose. This is where I belong. What's wrong with that? It's good, honest work. Pots and pans don't scrub themselves. Glasses don't fill themselves either. Unless you're in Byzantium. I hear everything's automated there. Not that I'll ever find out. Not so fast. I told you about my life. Your turn to tell me about yours. So, what's your story? What's there to figure out? Stands to reason you work for a company. You ain't Spacer's choice. Could be you're with Auntie Cleo. You're one of those freelancers then? Running about Halcyon, selling off your loyalties to the highest bidder? Well, good luck trying to figure yourself out. Sounds like you'll need it. Ugh, is this the start of a joke? If you want me to laugh at your jokes, it's a three drink minimum. Most folk forget where they're standing after a few drinks. Seems to me you've got a head start. Anyhow, whatever happens outside the walls is not my business. Only deserters and marauders wander out there. And I cannot tell you which I revile more. My world is these four walls, that door, and a row of mugs that need cleaning. Let me make something clear. Spacer's choice has been real good to me. The town's been real good to me. I start gallivanting around outside the walls, poking around in places I shouldn't be, learning things I've got no right to know. People will talk. <laughs> Won't ever catch me asking about the world outside. Else the town's gonna say Amelia's gone soft. That Amelia's pondering desertion. <laughs> I don't want that. There you go with that thinking again. Didn't anyone ever tell you it's dangerous? I've said enough. People come here to drink their problems away. If they wanted to face their problems, they'd go see our vicar. Bring us honor, soldier. Feast your eyes, soldier. This here is a genuine Spacer's Choice injury customizing unit. Designed to deliver a lethal blast of electrical discharge. I call it the Hand of the Law. You ever want to see a mechanical flailing around like a grounded fish? 
You stick a couple thousand volts in its guts. With compliments from old Ludwig. There's a workbench right through this door. Attach that unit to your favorite weapon and go forth into glorious battle. Time's come for you to journey down into the black heart of the enemy's camp. I'm talking about the old geothermal plant. Unfortunately, the old plant lies outside my board-given jurisdiction. You'll need to get a passcode from the boss, Reed Thompson. I've been after a passcode for years. Boss said no on account of my gross incompetence with all matters related to security. I need you to get us the brain of a mechanical. Well, not exactly a brain. Anatomically speaking, what we're looking for is a logic module. There's the rub. If a mechanical breaks down, the logic module fries. So you can't rip one out of its corpse. You're gonna have to find an intact model somehow. I don't reckon so. I work with gears and pistons and such. Stuff you can put hands to. Computers and mechanical brains are outside my ken. You know, she names the mechanicals she fixes. Calls them Bess and Clancy and so on. You keep a careful eye on her. Could be a sympathizer. Don't tell anyone, all right? I've got a contact. A real expert in the inner workings of the automaton. We are gonna rip those mechanical secrets right out of their circuits. Well, excuse me. What I meant was I'm going to get a contact. I didn't know I had to be all prissy about my grammar around you. If you die horribly, I will pour out a can of Zero-G to your memory. Go on.
System performing an area. Here they come. Where are we headed? In the bar? 
when I asked if you were a drinker? Sorry. I know it's none of my business. It's not like I think it a failing, mind. It's just I... I live right across the road. Most nights I watch folks out my window. When they come in here, they might be happy or sad. Mostly they're tired. When they leave, they're mad at themselves. Or they stumble into the alley and I listen to their hearts breaking. There's been scary nights. But Constable Reyes is right up the road. She keeps an orderly town. I always wanted to poke around in here. Um, Mr. Thompson said to talk with Miss McDevitt before doing anything here? Where are we headed? <laughs> 